Let's say you're building a spaceship, or a flight simulator, or a stream deck, and you need a nice backlit panel for it. Well, you could do this with a laser engraver, but if you want to work quickly and less expensively, it might be tempting to try to use just a laser printer, an ordinary desktop printer. Well, in this video I'm going to show you that it is possible to get results just like what you're seeing here using a regular desktop printer. In fact, this panel that we're looking at right here was built mostly using a desktop printer and then a couple dollars worth of dollar store parts. Let me show you how we did it. Okay, so first of all, when we talk about building a panel like this, maybe we should start by talking about uh, what I'll call the right way of doing it, or the professional way, uh, which is usually to use a laser engraver. So I want to show you some clips from an amazing YouTube channel called The Warthog Project. And this creator has built an A10 Warthog simulator entirely using a home desktop laser engraver. So uh, cutting out plexiglass, spray painting it, lots of layers of black spray paint, and then laser engraving away the lettering and other indications on dials and instruments. And this is actually pretty close to how this process would work in a Boeing or Lockheed factory. And honestly, at this point, I think that the Warthog Project guy could probably just build an A-10 cockpit. That cockpit is so impressive, it's going to last forever. That's the right way to do it. But let's say that you want to get results maybe 90% as good as that, but you want to do it less expensively and more quickly. Because the laser method does require an expensive laser engraver. Uh, the one used in the Warthog project is about five or $600 plus several hundred dollars worth of enhancements. Um, but also it requires uh, a slow process of the spray painting, letting the paint dry, and then engraving it away. So if you want to work quickly and less expensively, it'd be tempting to use a home printer, just a regular laser printer that you could buy at an office supply store. Now, if you try this initially, you might find that the results are not so good. And in fact, if you just output a, a regular CMYK document, it might look pretty good from the top. And actually, I'm gonna show you the, the easiest way that I know of to make a panel that doesn't have to be backlit is just taking a laser printed document and uh, putting it directly onto a piece of foam core. So this is just dollar store foam core. And it looks great. I mean, you know, you can hold it back about this far and it looks fine. There's no way to backlight this, but it looks really good. So that's a very simple way to make a good looking panel. But if you want to take it that extra level and do something that can be backlit like this, here's the plexiglass panel that I'm going to show you in this video. And it does backlight, as you can see. If you want to do this, we're going to need to make some improvements to the process. So let's talk about that. So First of all, you'll need to go to the dollar store and find some plexiglass. And a benefit of what I'm going to show you here is that you can use clear plexiglass, which is the most common thing to find in, in picture frames. So for a dollar or a dollar twenty-five, you get a nice piece of plexiglass, you can score it and then snap it to get a size out that you need. And this is just cheap extruded plexiglass, but it's okay. It's going to drill and sand just fine for a project like this. You can use a Dremel tool on it, things like that. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is set it down in an old cardboard box. Uh, here I'm using a box from a, a Google Stadia, just a nice big white box. Phone in the bottom, flashlight pointed up, gives us a light box. Put your plexi on top and then your printout on top. And as you can see, it looks really washed out. There just aren't enough molecules of toner in between the light source and your eyes in order to completely black out that black area. And in fact, if you look really closely, you might even see some lines and sort of imperfections in the printer's laser printing process, which is just not good. So how can we make this better? Well, first of all, number one, we need to use better paper. So find some 28 pound or 32 pound paper just from an office supply store. And actually at a copy center, they might even just sell you a couple of sheets of this for less than a dollar, a couple of cents. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is turn up the black portion of the design, so the bottom layer, if you're working in something like Photoshop, to 100% CMYK black. So 100% cyan, 100% magenta, 100% yellow, 100% black. And this is not something you would ordinarily do in a commercial printing process. Actually, you can get a better looking rich black by using different combinations than that. But here, we're just trying to get the printer to put every bit of toner that we can onto the page. So 100% CMYK black, and then try printing that. Now this might be pretty good. You can try this at this point, probably be a big improvement, but you will still notice a difference uh, between the shadowed areas of the design and areas that have just been built into the black of your panel. There's still further that we can go with this. And in fact, if we want to go one level deeper, we're literally going to need another level, another layer on the design. And the only way that we've got left to do that is to print on the other side of the paper. 
And this is what's going to get you that deep, rich black. So if you look at the panel here, uh, on the front, you can see that I've printed uh, some color. You know, as you turn this dial around, it's pointing at regions of different color. But on the back, it's all black and white. You can think of this basically just as a, as a mask. You know, the, the black area is preventing light from getting through, and the white area is allowing white to get through to the front, either just because that's white in the design, uh, or because we wanted to see some color there. So this is what we need to do now. We need to print this back part, and this is difficult to do. The printer you're going to be using in a home or office was never meant to do really precise duplex printing like this. There are no registration marks, so you're just going to have to do it by trial and error. you got to print out the front, put the page back into the printer, try printing the back, and then see if it lines up. Kind of hold it up to the light, and it's not going to line up initially. It's not going to look good. But you'll know which direction to nudge it. So you go back to the software, move it a little down, a little to the right maybe, and try printing again. Keep doing that until you get a design that lines up just close enough that it looks good. Now, you can buy yourself a little bit of extra room to do this uh, by just duplicating your layer a couple of times, basically making the white regions a little bit thicker. Just gives you, you know, half a millimeter that the registration can be off and it'll still look okay. Once you've done this, it'll be very exciting. You'll hold it up to the light and you'll realize that you've got here a pretty professional looking top layer for an instrument panel. So now you just need to go back to the plexiglass, use some spray glue in order to mount the two layers together, and I'm suggesting a 3M classic product that works well with either paper or plastic. So you'll let that dry and then you can snap it or cut it down to size, drill, maybe fill out the holes from there, and for less than a dollar you can have a pretty good looking panel. A panel that you can inspect pretty close up. Here you can see that I've I've weathered some of the edges. I've just done some uh, sort of silver hobby paint in order to make it look like scuffed up aluminum. But this really holds up. You can get up very close to it. The top surface, uh, because it has that mottled thick toner look, it almost kind of looks like a, uh, like a powder coated metal. Really convincing. Now, not quite as convincing as a, a laser completed project. It's kind of a sheen to this uh, that it'd be hard to get rid of. You could try a, a top coat, a spray satin on top of it or something, but still, pretty good and really, really easy to do. You can be done this project in under half an hour. And you may have noticed earlier that I was actually designing the panel in PowerPoint, so you don't need fancy software to do this. At some point, you do need to bring your design into something that lets you set that 100% black. I used Photoshop, but you could absolutely, of course, use uh, Inkscape or something like that. Now, one note, remember when you're doing your mask that you're going to need to invert and make completely white your design. You need to horizontally flip it uh, and then drag uh, the, the level such that any color goes away. Or you can just draw another version of your design that's completely white. That'll get the mask that you need. So uh, overall, after lots of experimenting with different methods to achieve this, I think that this panel looks pretty good. I hope that it's helpful to you if you're building a panel for a flight simulator or a stream interface, something like that, or for a spaceship as I'm doing here. Now, the next thing you might be wondering is, okay, what do we do with all these buttons on the back? You know, I mean, we've got them in there, we've threaded them in, but they haven't been wired up. And uh, I'll show you soon how I'm planning on doing that using an Arduino Mega, which presents some challenges, but so we'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching.